ministering the Word of God. Let's stand up and honour the Word of God and the woman of God as she comes and ministers. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> I'm going to do something a little bit, in, little bit different. Um, this came to me last night and also this morning while Phelan was ministering. Um, a number of years ago, I was cleaning the bathtub and I was bending over and I was singing in tongues to a song by Diana Ross called Mahogany. And as I did that, I got an interpretation. And the Lord brought it back to me this morning, and I'm not a singer, but I will try and sing it. And it's, um, do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that God's been showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know? Do you know what God has in store? Are you ready to walk through that open door? What are you waiting for? Do you know? And the Lord spoke to me about this and it came back to me this morning when Phelan was ministering about how God has plans and purposes for our lives which are good and we need to know them. And the Lord was saying to me this morning that people need to use his phone number. <laughs> Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Because God has a plan and purpose for each and every one of us and it's a good plan and a good purpose. And it says in Hebrews 11.1 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And a lot of this meeting and, and the way that it's been flowing has been about hope. And hope is an earnest expectation of good. So we need to be expecting some good things. We, we need to be open. We need to open the doors ourselves, don't we, to hear from God. He wants to tell you what's in the future. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you don't know. But you have to get rid of any preconceived ideas. One of the biggest things I ever learned about prayer is getting rid of preconceived ideas because we all have an idea about how things are going to work, don't we? And it sounds easy to say get rid of preconceived ideas, but I found it very difficult. And um, I think I shared an example here years ago that um, when my son was going to go to high school, we had preconceived ideas. We thought, well, he'll go to this school, this school or this school because they were the closest ones to where we lived. And um, we were asking the Lord, now, Lord, which one? This one, this one or this one? And what do we hear? Nothing. And I spoke to a lady who was um, very involved in prayer and she said, make sure that you get rid of preconceived ideas. So I did that and I thought, well, Lord, whatever you want, that will be just fine. Where would you like Justin to go to high school? And he said, Brisbane Boys College. Oh, and I thought, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> this school has a waiting list from birth. It's one of the most expensive, prestigious schools in Brisbane. We live so far away, it was like, I think it was a bus and two trains to get there. We didn't, in the natural, have the money for it to happen. And I thought, wow. So I spoke to my husband and I said, well, I've been praying and the Lord's told me where he wants Justin to go to school. And he said, where is it? And I said, I'm not going to tell you. You need to ask God. So he asked God and he said, it's not BBC, is it? And I said, yes, it is. So... Anyway, it was a very interesting story. Um, I tried to type a, a, a letter to the headmaster saying, we've heard from God. God said he's going, blah, blah, blah. And every time I'd try and type, because this is, this is a long time ago, my son's 52 this year. Um, every time I'd try and type, I'd make all these mistakes and I couldn't do this stupid letter. And it finally, something went off. Oh, God wants you to pray first and handwrite it. So I prayed and what I prayed was, Lord, I just pray that this letter comes to the headmaster's remembrance, that he will remember this letter. And um, we thank you that you've said that Justin will go to this school. Well, um, we told neighbours, unsaved neighbours, and I'm going to be sharing about the power of testimony today. But we told unsaved neighbours and they were, you've got to be kidding. Who do you think you are? You know, you're talking about these people mocking. Who do you think you are? 
you know, what makes you so special? And we said, well, we're children of the living God. And God's spoken to us and said he's going there. Oh, he'll never go there. He'll never get in. And we said, no, we believe he will get in. So we stood our ground and it got really long and long and long and long. And what we didn't know was that our son didn't want to go to BBC. He wanted to go where his friends were because they were all going to local schools. Anyway, it went on and on and on and we're just standing in faith and wondering what's going on. It got to a stage where we even had to go and buy some uniforms for another school because it was right at the, the end. Anyway, um, school starts after Australia Day usually. So on Australia Day, we get a phone call and I forget the man's name, but he says, oh, hello, Mrs. Sweet, this is so-and-so. I'm the headmaster at Brisbane Boys College. We've had a last-minute cancellation. Would Justin like to come? And I said, oh, just a minute, he's in the pool. I'll just go and ask him. So I went out there and I said, Justin, it's the headmaster. Would you like to go? And he said, oh, I think I would. I said, he'd had a change of heart. So we... Um, we said, well, we'll be up at the uniform store straight away. Got his uniforms, got everything organised. Got him to... Um, he was actually... Um, oh, the headmaster... I'd left the most important part out. The headmaster said, I remembered your letter. I remembered your letter. We've had a last-minute cancellation. Would he like to come? So that was what happened. And it was really interesting. There was other things on there that go with it, and it's too long to tell. But um, it was just amazing. And our son had a lot of warts on his body. I think there was over 50, which were not nice. You know, for a kid, they don't like to have warts and that. And uh, within six weeks of him starting that school, every wart disappeared off his body. His self-esteem went through the roof. He was ministering to the school chaplain <laughs> about being filled with the Holy Spirit. His whole life changed and he was only there for a year before we went off to Bible college in Western Australia. But it, it changed his life. And you know, God has a plan and purpose for every one of you and he wants you to find out what that plan and purpose is. And he wants you to be willing to step out into that. Because often it's us that's holding back. It's us that's stopping the plan of, and purpose of God in our lives because we haven't maintained our expectation. Are you ready to walk through the open door? Because God's got an open door for you, but you have to be ready to walk through it. You have to get rid of any preconceived ideas and be ready to go through that door. So praise the Lord. Well, that was all add on. And that was, so thank you, Spirit of God, for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the moving of your spirit in this place over this conference. Lord, we just so appreciate you. We thank you for lives being changed. We thank you for revelation knowledge flowing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to give you something really easy to do. Can you say it's easy? easy. Any one of us can do this, right? I'm into simple. You know the KISS principle? Keep it simple. So if it's easy, I want to know about it. Okay. So in Acts 1 and verse 8, Acts 1 and verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power dunamis, miracle working power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So one of the purposes for us to receive the Holy Spirit is to be a witness. So what does a witness do? What does a witness do? Have you watched all the, the police shows and the judges and all the courtroom shows and things? What do they do? A witness gives evidence, a witness testifies, a witness tells what they've seen and what they've experienced. Isn't that right? Well, God says here that one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is for us to be witnesses, to give our testimony. Amen? There are many Christians who want to lead people to the Lord and they think that they need to know the Bible. They think that they need to know a whole heap of scriptures and they need to be able to quote them. And then they back off because they think, well, I'm not good enough. It's too hard. I don't know what to say. What will people think of me? I'm giving you something easy. All you've got to do is tell them what God has done in your life. How hard is that? Really, really easy. And it doesn't have to be a long testimony about, oh, you know, I was into drugs and I did this and I did that and 
And, you know, then eventually at the end, God saved me. You know, tell them what God did this week for you. Tell them how, what God's doing in this conference for you. All the, the words and things that are, um, the healings, the words that have come out, tell people about it. That's what's going to draw people in. They don't want to know about some idol. You know, there's a lot of religions that have idols. You have Buddha. You know, this big statue sitting there that does absolutely nothing. They want to know about a living, powerful God who will help them right here and right now. Isn't that right? And do we know that God? I do. I've experienced the goodness of God in the land of the living. And he helps me all the time. He helped me with my son's school. Not just with finding him a school, not just with favour, but in healing his body at the same time, healing his, his self-esteem, changing his life. His whole life changed from one year in that school. God provided the finances for us to do it. We didn't even believe in private schools. We thought they were a waste of money. I'd just send him to the public school, you know, it's a lot cheaper. We had three kids, but you know what? It changed his life. And it was God's plan and God's purpose for him. So it's not just a testimony of being born again that's important, even though it is good. There's all kinds of testimonies. How many people here have been healed physically at some time in your life? Praise the Lord. Look, huge proportion. How many people have you told about it recently? I've got one hand. <laughs> you don't have to put your hands up. <laughs> just think about it, okay? <laughs> in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 and I didn't look at the time Pastor Les you might just have to wave at me like <laughs> um, <laughs> no temp <laughs> <One cor laughs> I might start laughing again after last night <laughs> 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear or endure it. There's no temptation that's not common to man. So whatever you've gone through, whatever you've been healed of, whatever experience God has helped you through, it's common to man. You can be sure that there's a lot of people that are going through the same stuff. Like Failing was sharing about the um, devices of the enemy and the way that he works. You know, there's only a certain number of devices he has and they're all really grounded in deception, aren't they? But we can overcome all that and we have overcome all that and we can share that with other people. It's common to man. So whatever you've been going through or you've gone through, or um, if you're going through something now, then more than likely there's someone sitting right here in this room who's been through the same thing and come out the other side. So we can be an encouragement to each other. Amen? I recently went to Perth um, late last year and saw a friend that I, I'm in touch with her all the time, but we hadn't actually physically been together for many years. And we went for a drive from Perth to Albany, which is about four and a half hours each way, I think to visit another friend well the whole way all the way there and all the way back do you know what we did we shared testimonies I would tell her something good that God had done in my life then she'd tell me something good that God had done in her life and we just we were just cranking off each other all the time iron sharpens iron we were being edified you know the Bible says that um in Revelation 19 verse 10 the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy so what does prophecy do? It's ed edification, exhortation and comfort. So we're having the spirit of, pro of um, we're using our testimony, it's the spirit of prophecy and we are just edifying each other, we're exhorting each other, we're comforting each other. By the time we got back, we were pumped. We were so excited because we'd been reminded of the goodness of God and all the things that he'd done in our lives. And if he did it once, he'll do it again for us. Amen? So sharing a testimony has a twofold effect. When you hear yourself speaking your testimony, it reinforces your faith 
It increases your gratitude and praise to God and builds your hope for the future. Testimonies are a reminder that if God did it for you once, he will do it again. Amen? If he could do it for me once, he'll do it again. He's not limited. But we limit him sometimes in our own thinking or we forget what he's done for us. We need to remind ourselves. I think it was Joyce Meyer once talked about having a book of remembrance. And I haven't done this. I just rely on the Holy Spirit to remind me of all the goodness he's done. I'm sure there's lots of things I've missed. But, you know, if we did that, if we wrote down every time, words couldn't contain it, could they? He's been so good to us. It would be, how thick would the book be? You know, of all the things that God has done for us. The second thing is when you believe something in your heart and speak it out of your mouth, it's like directing beams of faith to the heart of the hearer. So I believe when you leave here today, your faith is going to rise. Your faith is going to, you're going to think, wow, God's so good. Oh, yes, he did that for me. He did that. Oh, I'm going to tell somebody else about this. I'm going to tell them what God did for me. That's going to encourage them, but you're also encouraging yourself because the spirit of faith, it says in 2 Corinthians 4.13, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. So if you've experienced something in your life, do you doubt it? Do you doubt that it happened? I got married. I don't doubt that I got married. I was there. (laughs) I was there. I don't doubt it. Therefore, when I talk about it, when I share about it, I know that it happened. I know that it's truth. I believe it in my heart. I speak it out of my mouth. And that is the spirit of faith. And you can impart that spirit of faith to everyone you meet. Amen? Every single person. Share what God has done in your life. We find an example of this in Mark chapter 5 and verse uh, 25 to 29. It says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus... She came behind in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Jesus went on to say that her faith had made her whole, not his. So how did she get this faith? Well, this is what I think happened. She's out hanging out the washing. She's got her old wooden dolly pegs. She's putting them on the line. Neighbour puts his head over the fence and says, Hey, have you heard what's going on down at the edge of the sea? There's this guy down there and all these people are coming and they're getting healed. I got healed. My sister got healed. My brother-in-law got healed. You've got something wrong with you. Why don't you go down there and get healed? Would he have preached a whole, or she, might have been a lady, preached a whole heap of scripture at her? The New Testament wasn't even written, was it? The woman with the issue of blood wasn't even born again. What happened? Somebody shared a testimony. They said what was happening. Hey, have you heard what's going on at Transformers Church? There's this awesome prophetic faith conference and the Holy Ghost is moving and people are falling over under the power of God and their lives are being changed and they're being lifted up in, in faith and people are being healed. You want to get down there. How hard's that? How hard is that? Honestly, how hard is that? How hard is that to do? I've heard of many conferences in crusades in Africa. You know, up to a million people come. How do they come? What brings them? Somebody has spoken to them and said, what is happening? People are being healed. People are being delivered. People are being saved. People are being filled with the Holy Spirit. You better get yourself there. Is that hard? It's easy. Everyone say, it's easy. It's easy. Easy peasy, my husband used to say. Praise the Lord. So this woman wasn't born again, yet she had faith. Abraham, the father of faith, was not born again. He wasn't born again. 
He simply trusted in God and believed what God had spoken to him. He also didn't have a Bible that he could study every day. As a matter of fact, there's not one person in all the multitudes that Jesus healed who was born again. Now, this is really good news. You know what this tells me? It doesn't matter who you're sharing with. It doesn't matter if they're the worst sinner that ever walked on the face of the earth. God is willing to heal, save and deliver them. You can be 100% persuaded that every single person that comes up for prayer or every single person that you want to pray for, that is God's will for them to be healed. No doubt. 100%. And it's easy to start sharing with them. I've, I've shared here before about how I've spoken to my neighbours. There's not one of my neighbours out of the 130 or so on the list on my phone that haven't heard my testimony haven't heard a testimony from me. The most recent one was um, after my husband passed away, my uh, dog was getting really old and I prayed and asked the Lord for an extra 18 months because I just didn't want to face death twice in a really short period of time. He was really old. <coughs> and um, anyway, he uh, lived for 18 months and 10 days. That's a testimony, isn't it? And some things that seem simple are going to minister life to people when you share it with them. And it's amazing how when you start to share your testimony, they'll start to share with you about their lives. You know, random strangers, have you noticed that? You just start talking to some random stranger, someone you've never met, they'll tell you whole lot, their whole life history in the 10 minutes. It's like, wow, I can't believe you're telling me this. But your testimony is a doorway to an open heart. Amen. <clears throat> so the scripture doesn't give us much detail about what happened to this woman. It just says she heard about Jesus. She obviously believed what she heard because she then went on to say, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now, I'm going to share some testimony with you as, apart from the one about my son. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, my husband and I went to visit a lady in hospital, a Christian lady, and she was in the maternity ward. And she had needed bed rest or something. I can't remember exactly now. But we were talking to her and we were sharing with her about the things of God and most probably testifying as well. And uh, I don't think she was a Christian, but she just sort of talked across. She said, um, excuse me, are you ministers? And we said, yes, we are. And she said, well, <clears throat> I've got this big problem. She said, I've just had this little baby. And during the um, birth, they had to give me an epidural. And the epidural pierced a nerve in my spine. And they're saying I could be in hospital for months. And I want to go home with my baby. And um, she was in excruciating pain. And I said to her, well, you qualify. And um, I had my little bottle of oil, which I've got my bag, little bottle of oil in, my, in um, my bag. And I said, here, let me read this to you. And I got James 5, 14 and 15. And I said, it says here, if anyone, is anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, I don't think this lady was a Christian. I don't think she was born again, but she was desperate. She had a need. She had a brand new baby, a lot of pain and was being told that she would be separated from that child and not be able to look after it properly. So I read her this scripture, explained to her that because we were ministers, she had already qualified because she called for the elders of the church. She asked us to come over and pray with her, and I said, no, I've got this little bottle of oil, and according to this scripture, I read it to her, when I anoint you with oil... The power of God will go into you. This is your point of contact and you receive at that point. So that's what we did. Anyway, we left, went home. The next day, I rang the lady who we had gone to visit and said, um, oh, how are you doing? And, she, and I said, oh, and by the way, how's the lady in the bed next to you? And she said, oh, she's gone home. She's totally healed, gone home. Isn't that wonderful? Now, God is no respecter of persons. What he will do for one, he will do for another. He doesn't care if they're born again or not. Just start praying for people. It says believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This wasn't instant. 
she recovered, but she recovered quickly enough to go home the next day. Praise the Lord. So the gospel is the good news concerning Christ and the way of salvation. I've heard it taught that more accurately translated, it should be the almost too good to be new, true news. And if you watch Andrew in one week, you'd know that. One of the ways we can share the gospel is by sharing what God has done in our own individual life. That's easy. Now look at the Samaritan woman who met Jesus at the well. Jesus was going somewhere and he said, I have to go through Samaria first. So he went to this well. He, there was a woman there and he, he asked her for a drink. He explained about um, being you know, a well of water, springing up into eternal life, all those sort of things. But then he went and said, where's your husband? And she said, oh, I don't have a husband. He said, yeah, you're right about that. You've had five husbands and the one you're with now isn't your husband. And what did she do? Straight away, it says here that she ran back home to tell everybody, hey, I've met this guy who's told me everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? And it says here in John 4 verse 42, many came to hear and believed in Jesus. Why? Because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all I ever did. Why did they believe? Because she testified. Do you know, you have people's lives in your testimony. You can affect people's lives with your testimony. In Acts 10 verse 34, it talks about Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, a Gentile. And it says in uh, verse 34 that Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. He is no respecter of persons. The Son of Man, it says in Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. And we all know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not, for he did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So God's not a respecter of persons. And for the body of Christ to do our job... We need to be witnesses. We need to testify of the goodness of God and share what God has done in our lives. Watch that you're not moved away from the simplicity of the gospel. You know, we can get educated beyond our intellect, even with the word of God sometimes. We can get too complicated. We think we need to know all these scriptures. We need to know where they all are. We need to go through the concordance. We need to work out what, you, what every word means. And then the Lord is saying, go out and be witnesses. Testify what you've seen, what you've heard, what you've experienced. That's what will bring people in. And then they'll receive the word and the word will do the work. Amen. They're not going to receive the word if there's not something to a hook to bring them in okay our testimony is a tool that God has given us a very very valuable tool when we walk by faith we receive a good testimony and we all know that a testimony comes out of a test hey that's not always pleasant but it's good when we come out the other side victorious and we've got something to share I've been through a lot I uh, (laughs) We went to Bible college and we were, we had miracles to get there, absolute financial miracles. We were cashed up. Everything was great. It was just fantastic. It was like the love boat going through Bible college. You know, we could party. We could go out for lunch with friends. We were in the word all the time. Everything was great. And then the Lord said, will you go to Alice Springs and establish a church? (laughs) Yes, Lord. Oh, I know you will, he said, and you'll be blessed because of it. We didn't realize that the blessing was going to be a few years down the track after we got our butts kicked by the devil. Um, And we went through a real wilderness experience. But honestly, I would go through that all over again because I came out victorious in the end. Amen. We go through stuff. And when we go through stuff in faith, we come out with a testimony. It says in Hebrews 11... And I mentioned this before in verse 1, but we're going to read verse 2 as well. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, earnestly expected, the evidence of things not seen. But then in verse 2 it says, For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. How do you get a good testimony? By walking by faith. 
keep your faith in place and come out the other side victorious knowing that you've got something valuable and precious to share with others. Amen. So the woman who was healed of the issue of blood had a good testimony. How did she get it? By faith. I actually heard, I think it was Gordon Lindsay. Don't quote me on this, but I think it was Gordon Lindsay. Um, many years ago said that there was somewhere there was, um, I don't know if it was Josephus or someone said there was a statue outside this lady's house. The lady's name was Veronica. And she had this statue of like, touching the hem of Jesus garment and they think that she was the woman with the issue of blood but I don't know if that's true obviously that was just something that I read but I could just imagine it that she would be so excited and happy about her healing that she could put something like that out the front of her house as a testimony as a testimony amen revelation 12 11 I love this scripture it says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And we always think about the blood of the lamb, don't we? We have communion and we think about the blood of the lamb. And I'm not negating that at all. It is so, so important because the blood of Jesus was a sacrifice. But it says, they overcame him, the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. As Phelan was saying, you get to a stage where you don't care if you live or die because you know if you go, you're going to heaven anyway. You've already won. So, But the word of their testimony. There was a, a guy in Mark 5 um, who'd been demon-possessed in Mark 5, 18 to 20. And it says, when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him, Jesus, that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him. But said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Jesus himself said that many of you won't believe unless you see signs, wonders and miracles. And when someone has a sign, a wonder, or a miracle, if they will go and share that with others, it says here that they marveled. And Jesus, you know, he, wanted to, he wanted to go with Jesus, this guy. Jesus had delivered him from these demons and he wanted to stay with Jesus. Jesus said, no, don't do that. Go into all the world and be a witness. Go home to your family, go home to your friends and testify about what I have done, what, what's happened and how the Lord has had compassion on you. A few months ago, um, we celebrated Thanksgiving, um, mainly in America, but some people do it here. I've done it once or twice. And, um, you know, thank, our testimony is a huge part of Thanksgiving because it reminds us of the goodness of God and what he's done in our lives, doesn't it? And uh, it, I think just think it strengthens our faith all the time because we're reminding ourselves uh, in... Um, Luke 17, it talks about some lepers. It's a bit long. I don't want to read the whole thing. But it says that um, only one returned after he was healed. And Jesus in uh, Luke 17, 17, if you want to look at this, stories from verse 11 to 17. Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? You know, when God gives, does something for you, thanksgiving is a very important thing and giving glory to him is a very important thing. Um, I had an experience a number of years ago. We had a lady who came to our church and she was a minister and uh, she had a really bad rash, really bad rash. And um, we prayed, for, she asked for prayer, we prayed for her. We, I don't think we prayed in the service, I think we prayed outside the service and she was healed. Anyway, the next week, my husband was up the front, and um, I know this church is great because you have God stories. You know, people come out and testify, which is wonderful. Um, but I want to cover some of the reasons why we testify. So my husband said, is there anyone here who's been healed that could come out and give a testimony? Well, she was sitting in the service, and the Holy Ghost was saying to her, testify, testify, go out and testify. She didn't testify. The reason she didn't testify was because she was a minister 
and she didn't want people to know that she'd had something wrong with her. And um, so she didn't testify. Anyway, we saw her some time later and she had been hospital, hospitalised, hard word to say, hospitalised because um, that rash had come back and she said, it, this is her words, that it was like seven times worse. So bad that she'd had to go into hospital. But she, she then said, I, know, I had to repent. I had to ask God's forgiveness because I knew that I'd been disobedient. He had told me to testify and I hadn't done it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, you know, it's so important that we testify. When we testify, we give glory to God. When we talk about what God has done, it multiplies the miracle. Testimonies change the atmosphere. They build everyone's faith to believe God to do even greater things. I remember when we first got saved, um, there used to be four gospel businessmen. So I know there's still some around, but they're nowhere near as big as what they used to be. And um, we were really excited about God, obviously, when we got saved and filled with the Spirit. And we wanted friends to be born again. So we would take them to four gospel businessmen where you would, I think it was about $10, you'd invite someone for a dinner, usually at a pub somewhere, you'd, and you would pay for their meal. And they always had someone testify and I had several friends who got born again by going to those meetings. So I know the power of testimony. Amen. We're all part of the story. You know, the book of Acts is still going. Nothing's changed. And the Bible is full of testimonies. You know, the book of Acts is full of them. But the whole Bible, when you think about it, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ruth, Joshua, Moses, Ev Nehemiah, basically everyone, there's testimonies in there, isn't there? So the Bible is a book of testimonies. I recently heard a well-known minister say that the Hebrew root word for testimony, and I couldn't work this out, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but this is what he said. He said it means do it again. Repeat the miracle. When we speak a testimony, it creates the atmosphere for the miracle to be duplicated. You know, when we share the word, we're told to go out and um, cast out devils, speak in new tongues, lay hands on the sick and they recover. And then it says that the Holy Spirit, God, confirmed the word that was preached. So when you're sharing your testimony about something that God has done, you're sharing about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is right there to confirm that word. So you're helping to open people's hearts up so that they can receive from the Spirit of God that God, you're making that atmosphere for that miracle to be duplicated and to be multiplied. Amen? I love testimonies. I, I love when we come here and people have their God stories. Yeah, they come forward. So the whole book is a book of testimony. I'm going to just share, how much time have I got, Pastor Liz? I need to finish soon. Ten minutes? I'm just going to share a couple of little testimonies, okay? Um. One day, uh, we hadn't been saved that long. We went out to Greenbank to visit some friends for like a home group. And we were on our way back and it had been sprinkling. And in those days, the old bridge across the Greenbank train line was timber. And what we didn't realise was that when it got wet, it was very slick. And uh, it was at night and we came up to this bridge and we're about to cross it and it's kind of single lane. And there was a utility at the end of the bridge waiting to turn right. So we started to come on the bridge and our three kids were with us. The eldest one, Justin, was still awake. The other two were asleep. And we came to this bridge and David, my husband, put his foot on the brake to slow the car down, but it didn't slow down. It started to skid. And it was skidding towards the railings of the bridge, which would have... It looked like we were going to go down through the railing and crash down many metres onto the train line and probably all be killed. But then what happened was, all of a sudden, everything went into slow motion. Weirdest experience. Really slow motion. And um, I knew it, my husband knew it, and my eldest son knew it. All three of us all experienced this exact same thing. And David said, well, everything... And this is split-second stuff. Because you, you imagine, it's not a very big bridge. Um, this has happened very, very, very fast, but seemed very, very slow. And um, David said that he knew what to do exactly with the... I can't remember if the car was a manual or an automatic. No, so he knew exactly what to do with the vehicle. And then we don't know what happened, but we were past the ute. The ute was still there. 
and we were up past the ute and we just, he pulled the car over and I turned and looked at him. My son was in the back. He turned and looked at us. Just uh, David looked at me and we all went, huh? <laughs> <sighs> what just happened? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know if it was the ministry of angels or whatever, but I'm telling you, God's no respect of persons and what he'll do for me, he'll do for you. Amen. So then I had friend Jasmine. And uh, she went to Rayma Bible Training Centre where I went in Perth um, a couple of years after us, I think. And she gave this testimony. She said, I was driving from Rayma Bible Training Centre and was on Can Canning Highway going through an intersection. The light turned green and I drove through the intersection. A huge red truck went through his red light and was crossing right in front of me. I closed my eyes and called out, Jesus, and waited for the crash. When nothing happened, I opened my eyes and I was driving down Canning Highway about two miles down the road. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Awesome. So, what else will I share with you? I've got so many testimonies. The main thing is the devil wants to keep you quiet. He wants to shut your mouth and stop you sharing about how blessed you are how you've overcome challenges, how much God has helped you. There's power in your testimony. You, you know, you might not even be able to think of a testimony right now, but God will give you one. And uh, I had this experience a number of weeks ago. I was asked to share at a luncheon with some ladies. And my friend said, would you be able to share a testimony? And I said, yeah, okay. You know, I thought maybe they've heard all my testimonies, but... Um, that morning, about 7.30 in the morning, I prayed. And I said, Lord, can you give me a new testimony that I can share? So that, um, about two and a half hours later, I went to a place to have microderm done on my face. And the girl who used to do it was not there. She was off having a baby. And I knew there would be a new girl. So I got in there and this new girl was there. And um, she started chat with me and she said, um, I said, oh, where are you? She said, I've just moved here. And where are you from? I'm from Perth. But she said, oh, actually, I'm from Stanthorpe. My family are from Stanthorpe, but I've been living in Perth for a while. And then she said, um, I said, oh, I know Stanthorpe. We've been going there for since 50 years, multiple times a year. My husband had a lot of cousins up there, and we've actually ministered up there. And she said, oh, do you know Pastor so-and-so and so-and-so? I said, oh, yeah, we've ministered in their church. We know them well. And she said, well, do you know a lady called Trish who was going there? And I said, no. I don't know a Trish. I know there was a lady that they were ministering to and she was talking about people who were heroin addicts. And I said, I knew there were some people, uh, a, late, a lady that they were ministering to, but I can't rem quite, quite remember her name. It'll probably come to me, I think I said. And she said, oh, well, my mum Trish was an addict and my dad was a schizophrenic. And she said, we didn't have a very good relationship, obviously, because they weren't looking after us kids very well. And... Um, she said, but now these pastors had looked after and, and um, they'd come to know the Lord. And she said, now my mother's full on for God. She's born again. She's spirit filled. She's, you know, a leader in the church. My father's been set free of schizophrenia. She said, um, and that my, she said, how we came there was my auntie Michelle invited us. And I said, oh, Michelle's the lady I was trying to think of her name. And she said, oh, yes, she's still full on for God. She's up in North Queensland. She's a leader in the church up there. And she said, and also, um, she said, uh, and my brother, he took ice once. And he was immediately had really bad problems, lots of mental issues and all sorts of things. But she said, um, one day he went up to Mount Marley. He decided he'd kill himself. So he went up to Mount Marley and he said, my mum... Um, Normally, she would go for a walk in the morning. But this day, she said, you know what? I'm going to go for a walk up Mount Marley and said to the door to come with me. So they went up Mount Marley and spoke to the son. And he's been totally set free, born again, filled with the Spirit, full on for God. God will give you a testimony, even if you can't think of one. I went from nothing, thinking, you know, just saying, God, give me something new to a whole family set free by the power of God isn't that amazing and God wants to do it again and he'll do it again as you share now I know for a fact I asked if I had permission to share this testimony and she said yes she said as a matter of fact my son has shared it in the church about him going up to 
the mountain and everything. So, you know, the devil wants us to keep our mouths shut. He doesn't want us to share what God has done in, in our lives, you know. So that's what I really had in my heart to share today. I pray that it's blessed you. And uh, everyone say, it's easy. it's easy. You can all do it. Hey, even if it's not your own testimony, share another one. Did you get blessed by hearing about Jasmine in the truck? Yeah. yeah. That wasn't mine. She's a friend of mine. I know it happened. And um, it was directly in line with what happened to us, really. I don't know how we got past that ute. There's so many times God's helped us and delivered us and set us free and led us and stopped us going places we shouldn't go. And, you know, we could have had accidents and all sorts of things that could have happened. One day we were going down the highway, um, the M1, and all of a sudden my husband said, something's not right, something's not right. Pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. So we started praying in tongues. And the next thing we knew, a rim had come off a huge semi-trailer and was bouncing up the highway and it came right in front of our vehicle and put a nick about that big just on the bumper. And we thought, wow, deliverance from God. And we had this little mark on our bumper to remind us about the goodness of God and how he'd saved us and the power of praying in the spirit and deliverance. That's just one other example. Another time we were going to walk through the bush and we always had a track. It was before our street was developed near us. It was still bush. And we were going, we had this track that we used to walk on. It used to be the Arthur Park Raceway many, many years ago. But it had grown over and was bush and it still had some dirt tracks through it. So we would just walk through the bush. And this one day we just felt led by the Spirit not to go on that track, to go on a different track. So we had our little dog. I think we had two dogs at the time. And we were going, we decided to walk on the other track, which was kind of adjacent to it. And we're there in the middle of the bush on this track. And then we hear this loud roaring. And these hoons were coming, flying through the speedway on the track that we would normally be on. You know, another day my husband, this is all coming to me now. Another day my husband was at Sunnybank, the corner of Mains Road and McCulloch Street. And here's a bit of a rev head. My number plate is um, Q Rev 7 and my daughter's is Rev 7 which is the one we used to have. <coughs> so it's kind of reverend, God's number but also the car revved to 7,000. <laughs> so David's there, he's, um, he had his VL Commodore at the time and it was really powerful turbo car and he's at Mains Road and he liked to get to the speed limit as fast as humanly possible without getting a ticket. So he's there and he's ready to gun it and the, and the Holy Ghost said, no. And a huge semi came through a red light. <laughs> life was there's numerous times our lives have been saved and I'm sure that applies to each and every one of you but you know we need to be sharing those things with people amen well bless you have a great lunch everybody it's been my privilege to be here with you again thank you for inviting me praise the Lord hallelujah well that was really encouraging hey um we want to um we want to give you an opportunity to share a testimony of healing. So if anybody needs healing in their body, um, we're going to get Lindy to minister to you. Just come out right now and we're going to break for lunch in just a moment. But if you need healing, if there's something going on in your body, you don't have to leave here today with that condition. And so if you need healing, whether it's pain or a discomfort or a diagnosis, come out the front and uh, let's minister so you've got a testimony to share. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's stand up. And if you're in that position, just uh, come out now. Thanks, Pastor Les. I did have it in my heart to do this, but um, I was thinking about the time. That was all. So I didn't want to. Yes.
Just feel free to take a seat, folks, just while we're ministering.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up, folks. Uh, Andrew, could you put could you put the uh, program up for the day? Just to let you know, we're gonna we're gonna break for lunch here. If you if you um, haven't pre-ordered a lunch, uh, unfortunately, we're sold out. And uh, but you're welcome to come back uh, this evening. We're gonna start again at seven p.m. and just continue on with the conference. Uh, if you have pre-ordered a lunch, we'd just uh, feel free to just hang back and have a chat. We're going to uh, get the kitchen team to set up and we'll get your attention and just let you know what's happening. All right, bless you. <laughs>